we would see all of these little, you know, news video feeds and, and a little taste of what was going on in your life. But can you take us to what you were battling mentally, spiritually and emotionally as you're laying there believing for the best? So some of the things that I, I try to focus on every day is just try to have a positive thinking. I always, no matter what I'm dealing with, I'm always trying to be as positive as possible. And sometimes it gets my wife mad, but in every situation, I always try to find a light in it. And the one thing that I was dealing with in this situation is I've never got hurt this bad. I've never been in a situation like this before. So I was almost oblivious to how bad it was. So I just told myself, hey, this injury is not that bad. It's just like any other injury, you can overcome it. And after a while, I started to notice that it was taking a little bit longer than I wanted to to recover. And I actually started to pay attention and talking to the doctors about the, how serious the injury I was having at the time. But one thing that really helped me out a lot is just my family and my friends they all had positive thinking. They was all, sorry. They were all just behind my back, and they all understood that no matter what, we had to believe that Ryan's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Take a moment. You know, Ryan, just like hearing about that moment, I can, I don't think any of us can really understand what it was like for you to be in the hospital room, hearing what the doctors were saying. Can you just talk to us about like the faith that your family, you even had to have, like pulling together, being in that moment. It's a very, very traumatic situation and with your family, but there's something very special that your family made a decision for moving forward that when you were walking through your healing and recovery. It was really important just to have my family there. Uh, pretty much me and my mom are the most positive thinking people that you'll probably ever meet. And then my wife and my dad are more realist. And the thing is, one thing that my family did, and I didn't even know that they did this, but they did it, they told me after the fact, is no matter who came in the room, no matter who was coming to visit me, they would meet him at the door and say, hey, Ryan doesn't look the same as he once looked. But if you're coming, coming to this room, no matter what, you have to believe that in the same purpose as Ryan believed. Ryan's gonna walk again, Ryan's gonna play football again. So if you don't believe those things, if you're gonna talk negativity to him, you're not even allowed in the room. And I thought it was really important because my family, they didn't shed a tear in front of me. Like my, my, they, didn't, they didn't have people around me that didn't believe in the same thing I believed. And I think it's really important to have people around you that believe in the same purpose as you because if you don't, then any little doubt can, can spread. And that's one thing that they didn't want to do. They didn't want to have any doubt in the room. Yes. You know, Ryan, you're in great company because that's what Jesus did. There were certain miracles he kept everybody out because he knew he needed a level of faith in there in order to produce, you know, if Jesus needed that, mm -hmm. how much more do we need that? Even in this year, I believe this year, 2022 is a year of agreement. I think it's so important that we have that. What, uh, what was the turning point for you? I mean, obviously I know everybody knows that we could probably talk to you for the next hour on everything that you went through, but you know, you're, you're battling the fact that you're not going to play football again. What brought you to that point where you could make the shift in the change? Because you're still in the prime of your career. Everything's happening great for you. And then, bam, you know, you're finding yourself paralyzed there. How did you make that shift and make that transition? So at the beginning, it was very difficult to make a transition because I never imagined myself not being able to play football. I played football for 20 straight years without missing any games. Well, I would miss a game, I, I got injured in here or there, but I wouldn't miss a season. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I, if I played or practiced, it was because I wanted to. I never could not not play. And it was definitely difficult the first two years when I first drove to Heinz Stadium, Heinz Field the first time after yeah. I got injured. My first time going, I was still part of the team. I drove and parked in the player's parking lot and I cried for about 10 minutes because before I walked in and everybody understood what, what I was dealing with. They, they didn't understand, they didn't understand it from their point of view, but they knew it was really hard for me. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I just started to notice, hey, Ryan, it's time to move on. And I, I continued to feel like it was a possibility for me to play. But the one thing I started to really focus on and, and I actually got to do when I was hurt was I was spending a lot of time with my family and spending a lot of time with my kids. And I started to notice, and I definitely knew this before, but how important they are and that they meant way more to me than the game of football. Wow. So after a while, it stopped focusing on, hey, Ryan wants to play football again to Ryan wants to be around, to be the best father as possible, wow. to be able to go to theme parks and, and wow. walk around and, and joke around with my kids and, and play with my kids. Um, at first, my mission was, Ryan wants to be able to play football again and be the same player that he once was. But after a while, I started 
to focus on my family and just understand that this is way bigger than the game of football. And I, I changed my focus from that until, and, and, and that's how I was able to overcome it.